there we go. And everybody should be able to see my screen with Business Central right there. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, just to kind of quickly uh, summarize a couple of things here that we, we went through with, with the Binary Stream team, of course. Um, it's fantastic how much the MEM solution allows you to uh, be flexible uh, beyond standard Business Central when you have a lot of entities. Um, but still a lot of data that needs to be captured, right? And that's where we want to come in. That's where we can help in uh, reading files that you receive from your vendors and kind of build that data set that you can then so powerfully use with MEM. And, and, and in our belief, um, the combination MEM and continuous document capture is really one-on-one -on -one is three, right? The, the sum is, is more than... Um, and this is where I'm not a Native American speaker. I don't know the exact thing, <laughs> but uh, you get the point, right? It, it's uh, they really amplify each other's solution. We're both uniquely built inside of Business Central, and for this particular webinar, we were able to put together a demo environment where both are available. So if we take a quick look at the extension management section of Business Central, um, then you can see that the binary stream tools and the Continuous software tools are living side by side here in this environment. Um, kind of going where uh, Don was before too, uh, the purchase invoice list. When we go there, if you, if you wanna enter a new invoice and you click new, the first step uh, prompted by MEM is to enter a company code, right? This is a crucial piece of information to book this incoming invoice correctly. We want to automate these steps because why do people still go paper by paper uh, through the data, enter it, and with the next invoice, do it all over again, right? And let's not talk about even the archiving and retaining of some of that information. Um, Continia is also an extension to Business Central. It is built specifically for that, as my colleague Mark explained. Uh, and once installed, um, there is a tremendous amount of automation available uh, to you for the AP site, uh, but also for other document types. The first step, which we always do, is monitor that email box where the invoices come in, uh, and we OCR any PDF attachment that uh, is sent to you by your vendors. Um, that data then gets imported and the magic happens inside of Business Central. Uh, we can leverage all the, the data that's there to validate the information on the invoices. Um, if we go uh, and take a look at some of the documents that came into this demo environment, uh, then you see a list of documents and then the information that's been captured of those particular documents. And uh, as I click on fields, you can see on the right hand side where certain information was captured from. Uh, you also notice that it was able to pre-populate the company code. And we can use any piece of information in the document to uh, uh, translate that to a particular company code. Most commonly, of course, that's the bill to or the ship to address that the vendor uh, puts on the invoice. But really any piece of information can be used uh, to uh, give the MEM solution the required fields so that it can then do its magic once the invoice has been created. You'll notice too when I empty this field and I click outside of it that immediately the BC validations kick in and that the company code is incorrect, I would need to enter it. When I reprocess these documents by clicking recognize fields, it will enter that piece of information in again. So it knows exactly um, where and how to find that piece of information on the document. I can also always teach the system new tricks. Any type of information can be captured from the document. For example, the posting description, all I need to do is click here on posting description, and then I drag and drop a box around the posting description on the document, and that data is entered. It will also automatically remember this. So next time around, um, I immediately uh, have uh, that information present, right? I can now register this document, and yes, I'm clicking through this right now, uh, because I wanted to show you some examples, but any of these steps can be fully automated and you can choose to do that vendor by vendor. So uh, in order to get a level of comfort, um, maybe start with the vendors um, that you have an immediate gain because they sent you high volume or vendors that send you uh, complex documents and things like that, right? Um, these steps that I'm now clicking through could happen completely on the background. 
um, I see some permissions kick in, uh, but let's ignore that for now. Uh, you can see how it builds up the invoice, the original files attached, right? That's that archiving functionality that I was talking about earlier. And you always keep an image of the invoice on there as well. And that stays with the transaction uh, beyond posting as well. I can now uh, send this out for a approval request. Also, that is a step that can be automated and it can be based on the standard Business Central approval workflows, but Continia built logic on top of that as well. And we've built our own web approval portal that allows you to engage people throughout the organization that maybe don't work inside of Business Central to still get engaged on that approval process uh, to the extent even that you can allow them to enter certain dimensions or to update certain GL codes or things like that. Uh, right there in the browser on their computer, all they need is a team member license for Business Central. So it might even save you some on uh, the licensing as well. You see this one is now pending approval. In this case, it's going to a group. Uh, it can be multiple levels, of course. It can take into account approval limits or uh, some of that logic around the company code. Who is the approver for that particular company? Then that's where it's going to go to. All this logic, all this data lives only inside of Business Central. Continia doesn't put any of this information outside of BC. So automatically, Business Central is your single source of truth. It automatically also hooks into all your reporting tools uh, that you may need to um, uh, take care of some accrual information and things like that. Um, we'll get back to this uh, document later. Um, I do want to exit this. Here you see some other examples. Um, if I go to another type of vendor, you can see this one has been fully matched with purchase receipt 107209. Um, we can look up uh, against all. Um, the uh, POs and also the different uh, uh, receipts, of course. Uh, but if we look at some of the setups that are available for each and every vendor, you can see uh, what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to match it to a receipt um, and we're going to pick up the receipt number. Uh, we can also do that line recognition. And if we then want to be more uh, granular on the matching, we can be very specific also which elements uh, on the lines need to match on the receipt as well. So we can do that three-way match. We can also uh, add custom fields. So obviously company is a required field for this vendor. So we populate the MEM solution uh, accordingly. Um, but you can see the flexibility that this tool has. Um, we can match to an order and create an invoice. We can match and update the order or just create the journal lines as well. And then as a next step, and this is where you can apply that level of automation you can have it automatically submit for approval. So as soon as I get comfortable um, with the system reading these invoices, I can add my vendors to um, uh, automatically submit them for approval. And that is gonna save the AP team a tremendous amount of time because not only are they not entering the data for the invoices anymore, they're also not routing things constantly, chasing people around to add their appropriate input. Uh, the system will do the chasing for you and you always have right here in Business Central an accurate overview of who is approving what document. In the interest of time, um, I'm gonna go to uh, the approval process quickly. Uh, you can see we have uh, one invoice out for approval. As mentioned, we can always check that status quickly. We see the file here, we can drag and drop additional files to this as well. Uh, but the approval screen itself inside of Business Central looks like this. This is the invoice uh, that we're talking about. Um, this all looks good. So I can uh, approve this document and then it would either go to the next approver or uh, in this case, it goes to the status released. And this is sometimes where the AP team sees this document for the very first time. Um, you can see it's been approved uh, by Mark. I impersonated him here, right? Um, and uh, all data is available here. Um, and you can obviously change the views with standard Business Central functionality. Um, and, and this data is then also, of course, available in things like Power BI or stuff like that. We can uh, run a post-batch process here. You can also uh, run that automatically. So it automatically posts uh, things, uh, but I can also just post this one right now. And then um, we're gonna show you the resulting posted invoice. Once that goes through, it 
it's a little slow. That's the fun with the, the sandboxes. Um, and here you can see um, that um, the, the document has been posted. This is the resulting invoice. We have some approval comments. We have the original file still attached, and we also still have uh, this view. Um, a couple of things I would like to show you right here too is that there is a more detailed approval log. So if you get audited and your auditor is like, who approved this document two years ago? You can pull it up right here. If it goes through multiple levels of approval, you have very detailed information who approved it and when, when they got it sent to them. Uh, so you can even track who is always notoriously late with approving these documents. Um, and then, um, uh, as mentioned by Mark, the, the search feature is extremely powerful. Um, if I search for any term on the document, I know the term Redcroft was used on the document. We see we have three documents, two of which are still open. One is registered, and this is the resulting invoice. When I click show document card, it pulls up that exact same invoice, and you can see that the term Redcroft was used in the address. It still pops up though, because we search in our own search index based on anything we OCR. So I can pull that up super quickly. Uh, same for the show file, um, that gives me the uh, invoice the PDF that the vendor sent me and the email that it came in with. What is also very nice, and you can find this find entries button throughout Business Central, it uh, tells you the relationship, how this document relates to the GLs, the tax entries, the vendor ledger entries. So from whichever angle you need the original document or the original file, you can find it very quickly with the search and you can go straight to the GLs and uh, see the resulting uh, GL entries, including of course, all that MEM information as it's been uh, applied there. So the goal of Continia is really almost before you can benefit from the power of MEM, let's gather all this information from the documents you receive from your vendors Let's input that automatically. Let's route that as smoothly as possible through the organization to uh, gather the required input. And then we post this information and then MEM can do its magic. Um, and I think that gets me to the end of my portion of the demo. Back to the slide deck. 